This is Neil Patwari. This segment is on comparing the modulation method probabilities of error that we've finished talking about now. And um, I put in a table all of the formulas that we've gone over for different modulations and some that we haven't gone over but are useful and that you could derive using the techniques that we talked about. Um, and I wanted to explain what's going on here. Usually we're interested in the probability of bit error because it is the most universal measure of the performance of a digital communication system. Probability of symbol error is useful because it's often easier to calculate, but because of m area modulations, we don't exactly know how many bit errors a symbol error corresponds to. And when we translate it to probability of bit error, it is the uh, universally we can compare that from one method to another. So our digital communication systems that you might design are typically uh, constrained in probability of bit error. You might have an application that does not require a very low bit error rate, like um, broadcast video, for example. Um, some bit errors are just fine because people can naturally see through some bit errors and still enjoy the video broadcast anyway, as opposed to file transfer, where if I send a large file and I get one bit error, it may be enough to corrupt the entire file and make it unreadable. So our constraints are often on probability of bit error, and that will mean the same thing regardless of what modulation we chose. So here are different modulation names. You want to look uh, for the probability of bit error. When the m is equal to 2, as, uh, as in BPSK or on-off keying or DPSK um, or 2 binary FSK, then the bit error is going to be the same as the symbol error because one symbol is one bit. So uh, of course, I didn't copy the formulas directly into here. You can just see that the probability of bit error and symbol error that listed is the same, so you can use the, the expression from the symbol error column. When the probability of bit error is different than the probability of symbol error, for example, in MPAM, then you're going to use this relationship, one over log base two times the probability of symbol error for MPAM. While that relationship holds for MPAM and MPSK, it doesn't hold for non-coherent MRE FSK, or coherent FSK. Um, for square and quam as well and QPSK, it is actually easier for us to come up with the probability of bit error. So we do that instead of coming up with the probability of symbol error. And I've left these blank, not because there's no expression for them, but because, um, because we already have the probability of bit error. We may not need to get the probability of symbol error. Although you're welcome to go back in the notes to look at what these probability of symbol errors are. So that's kind of my summary of the formulas. You should keep a table like this in your notes and your note sheet for the exams, especially and for future reference. You can think of other characteristics of these modulations that would be useful for a communication system designer. And we've talked about some of them. We talked about constant envelope, the idea that um, that if a modulation sends the same uh, amplitude at all times, that it becomes a more efficient transmitter. So FSK, so all of these modulations for FSK are constant envelope. Um, and a version of QPSK called offset QPSK is the one specifically that we talked about in lecture that is constant envelope. The rest of these modulations are not constant. Oh, sorry. MPSK is also uh, can be used as a constant envelope if we do offset uh, MREPSK. So you can get to the same benefit of offset QPSK with offset MPSK. Um, but offset QPSK is really has the most constant envelope of any of the PSK modulations. 
Offset QPSK has the same probability bit error as QPSK, um, but it has constant envelope. You can also think about uh, phase synchronization error. So DPSK is robust to phase synchronization error. Non-coherent FSK is robust to phase synchronization error. So I have taken, copied in some figures from the Michael Rice book. And first we'll talk about the, this QPSK and QAM plot, where on the X axis we've got EB over N naught and DB. This is uh, EB over N naught, um, but converted to DB. That is, it's equal to 10 log base 10 of EB over N naught. EB over N0 is always going to be positive, um, and at least as long as the energy per bit is not zero. We can take the 10 log 10 of it and get this uh, log scale. It's typically how we refer to EB over N0. So for example, at EB over N0 of 10 dB, we can look up on the y-axis and we can see for the particular modulation, what is the probability of error. So for QPSK, I see that there's, uh, for an EB over N0 of 10 dB, I'd be right here on the plot. That would mean I would be somewhere between 10 to the minus 4 and 10 to the minus 6 in terms of probability of bit error. This PB is the probability of bit error. The Rice book uses PB universally for probability of bit error. Um, closer to 10 to the minus 6, I could try to estimate or guess what this value is here at the y-axis, um, but more importantly, I can compare these methods to each other. As I switch from QPSK to 16 QAM, which has a 4x4 grid of symbols in its constellation, my probability of bit error for the same EB over N0 is going to rise from here up to here to something around 10 to the minus 3. And similarly, if I went up to 64 quam, it would go up to something like uh, maybe 2 times 10 to the minus 2. So the probability of bit error is going up as m increases. I should mention that this is incorrect. It's m quam on this figure. So the next figure, though, is for MPSK and this is for 4, 8, and 16. Again, I can pick an EB over N naught and DB, say 10 DB again, and I can look up and see what these probabilities of error are. For QPSK, it's exactly the same as we saw in the previous plot because QPSK is 4 square quam. But then if I go up to 8 PSK or 16 PSK, you can see that for 16 PSK, my probability of error is very high. It's like 2 times 10 to the minus 2. Whereas previously for 16 quam, uh, the probability of bit error was much lower. So for the same m, I can achieve a lower probability of error using m quam rather than for PSK. You can see that it might be nice to compare the uh, modulations all together on one plot for a given m. And so here in this last figure, uh, Michael Rice has put four different modulations that each have 16 symbols onto the same figure. 16 QAM has, uh, again, for a EB over N naught of 10, has this um, probability of error. For 16 QAM, EB, the EB over N naught is, you know, something like 10 to the minus 3. For uh, 16 PSK, you can see it's a higher probability of bit error. And for 16 PAM, that is a one-dimensional modulation, it is very high, um, close to 10 to the minus 1. There is a modulation that uh, is also plotted here by Michael Rice called CCITT V29. Um, he shows the constellation for that modulation here. It happens to be used in fax machines. Um, that modulation is slightly worse than 16 square quam.
you can do other comparisons like this, plotting the probability of error versus different constellations, and you can uh, compare them to one another on a scale, on a plot that plots EB over N naught and DB on the x-axis and probability of bit error on the y-axis. And that is kind of the standard way of looking at constellations and their performance as a function of the amount of energy per bit that we send.